Today at shopdap.com, we're going to be going over engine component locations on a Mark 7 GTI. Okay, so before we get into our specific component locations, I want to talk real briefly. Uh, all of the component locations that we're going to talk about today are going to be on this Mark 7 GTI. This is a modified car, so there are a few variables which I'll discuss as we go through those component locations and how they would look different. Uh, the component locations we're talking about today are going to be on this Mark 7 GTI, but would also apply to the Mark 7 Golf R, Audi S3, Audi A3, and uh, MQB, all MQB cars, which would include uh, Golf's 18T cars, would have similar component locations to this. So let's get into our components. Okay, so here we have under the hood of our Mark 7 GTI and all the links of products and or videos that we're gonna be referencing in this video will be found in the description below because there will be a few different caveats to different things we have installed on this car where we also have install videos or explanations if you're looking for more in-depth information on those products. So let's start over here on the driver's side. We have a fuse panel here. There are two clips here that would pop off this fuse panel. And this will give you the ability to check all your fuses and there are also these power sources which are major power supplies for the vehicle. Going from there, we have our ECM or engine control module. This is mounted also in the engine compartment. And then you have your battery, which you can just flip up to access the battery terminals. Back here, we have our brake reservoir. And then we have our intake. This is a racing line intake. We do have uh, an install of this R600 intake. It replaces this whole duct piece and then the intake itself. This would be uh, different obviously on a factory car and this is an upgraded intake uh, for this vehicle. We then have our inlet here. This runs back to the turbo where you have your turbo inlet in the rear section here. Now, if we take our engine cover off, it's simple, just pops up. We can take a look under the hood here. Now, these components here, we have our ignition coils. One, uh, this goes one, two, three, and four. We have what would be our PCV valve here, but in this case, we have a block off plate for our catch can system here, which we have links to. We have a video installing this uh, catch can, and we also have a uh, explanation of what catch cans are for and what the purpose are. And then again, ignition coils here, which uh, the spark plugs will be found underneath the ignition coils on this vehicle. Moving from there, we have our N80 valve or EVAP purge valve. The EVAP purge valve for this vehicle or all Volkswagen Audis is uh, for recirculating evaporative emissions uh, ventilation back to the engine for burning. This is, burns extra fuel vapors from your gas tank, um, obviously uh, to prevent any issues in your gas tank itself. Moving further over to the engine, uh, we have our oil filter housing. The oil filter is located here. This uses a 32 millimeter socket, which we have a DIY install video on the, uh, for an oil change, which we will also link to in the description below, as well as the oil change kits we have for Mark 7s uh, as well. The oil cap was found right here, and this is just a screw off oil cap. Here is our coolant bottle, which uh, has this cap on here, and you can just remove that Again, keep in mind if you're opening your cooling system, if it's hot, keep in mind it is pressurized, uh, so you would wanna be careful doing that. Now moving to the back of the engine compartment, again, we have our ignition coils here just for reference and all the electrical connectors. We are looking down at the turbo right here. This is the turbo, and then here is our downpipe that runs down here, has the V-band flange that mounted in place. We have a DIY, inst uh, DIY install for installing a downpipe on a Mark 7 GTI as well as a Mark 7 Golf R. Uh, those will have links to as well, as well as the downpipes available for Mark 7s. And then if we look on this side, uh, this would be a PCV hose normally that runs into, this is our catch can in this particular case. And then a very difficult to see thing right here would be your, what would be a diverter valve on this car. We do have a blow off valve, which we also have a DIY on the blow off valve, as well as shows you just how to replace it. So. Um, we also have a video that explains how blow-off valves work and what the purpose of them are, as well as diverter valves and how they're different. Uh, that is something that we'll have links to in the description below as well. 
and then the turbo inlet hose, which runs down here from this intake pipe and then actually goes into the turbo itself. Now, as we are looking right here, this particular of actuator right here is going to be the intake manifold actuator rod. This would be controlling the intake flaps on the intake manifold. This would, if you have a P2015 fault, which was common on TSI engines, on a, the new uh, MQB cars, it would likely be related to this or and or the flaps internally in the intake manifold itself, uh, which is something that is to remain to be seen whether that's a problem on this model yet. Over here, we have our intake for the secondary air injection. This is actually the hose that comes out of the intake for fresh air. Uh, this would be something that is obviously imperative if you have secondary air injection. The Golf 180s and the GTIs would have secondary air injection uh, as well as Audi A3s, whereas the uh, S3 and Golf R would not have secondary air. So this is not something you would see on those vehicles, uh, but again, GTIs and 180s would have this. Now this right here is your high pressure fuel pump. Direct injection engines use extremely high fuel pressure, which cannot be achieved by the low pressure fuel pump, which will be found in your tank, which is why you have a mechanical high pressure fuel pump like this, which rides on the camshafts and would be a much higher pressure than what you would find coming out of low pressure electrical pump, which is why it has to be mechanically driven off the cams. As you can see here, we have our intake manifold and mounted right below that is going to be your throttle body. Now running up from the throttle body would be your intercooler piping that comes from the intercooler up to here, which obviously flows into your intake manifold. And we have our map sensor located right here. Now, if we take a look here behind the oil cap assembly, you can take a look at the very back corner of the engine and see the ABS pump and module. That's all one piece and you can see the, the brake lines that run up here, which are going to be all your brake lines for your ABS system and braking system. Now, something that may be hard to see on video back here, there are eight solenoids that run along the back of the valve cover here. Now, uh, these are going to be your variable valve timing solenoids. They're right behind the four ignition coils here. And so they control your variable valve timing on this particular engine. Okay, so here we are looking from the bottom of the vehicle up or underneath the vehicle and just want to talk real quick quickly about the components under here uh, right here we have our lower engine shield this would be something you would need to take off a lot of times uh, for older vehicles if you were changing oil because the mark 7 has an oil filter up top that's not required uh, and oftentimes this would very infrequently come off under normal maintenance of any kind uh, we're going to take it off just so we can show you what's all around here All right, now that we have our engine cover off, let's start towards the back of the vehicle. If you can take a look here, this is gonna be our downpipe running out the back of the vehicle that comes from up top and down over the subframe to the back of the vehicle. We have our lower engine mount, often called dog bone or torque mount. This would be something that you would use an insert uh, to replace this or, or replace this bushing itself. Uh, we have a video coming on that, which once we launch that, we will link to that in the description below as well. We have our transmission uh, located right here. This uh, dog bone mount actually keeps the engine and transmission from moving backwards. This would most often be when you're launching the car, uh, the engine and trans would tend to shift backwards. So you wanna make sure that that's solidly in place. We have our engine here on this side, transmission again on this side. This is your low, lower oil pan assembly. Uh, there also is an upper oil pan assembly which goes between the engine block and uh, obviously the lower oil pan, it is aluminum. And then the lower oil pan, this particular one is an upgraded steel one. Uh, the factory oil pan is a plastic composite material. We have a DIY video, video showing you how to install this steel pan. Uh, and we'll also have a link to that in the description below. Right here, we have your oil level sensor. Uh, and this would be uh, mounted in your pan assembly. Now running here, we have our boost pipes. We have uh, this one and this one, they both mount to the intercooler. We have a Revo intercooler. We also have a DIY video showing you how to install the Revo intercooler on your, on your vehicle. And this one actually comes from the turbo. Uh, turbo pipe actually comes down here and then goes into the intercooler and then we'll go across the core and then come out this one and go up the throttle to the throttle body. This one, this pipe goes straight up to the throttle body itself. 
your fan would be mounted right here on the radiator support itself and your starter is mounted straight up here on a manual transmission keep in mind on the bsg this may vary as far as location but it's uh, very accessible on the manual transmissions directly straight up here uh, and easy to get in and out our secondary air injection pump over here mounted up and on a bracket out of the way and again these hoses that come up from the top where we talked about earlier thank you so much for watching our mark 7 component location video if you like this video be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more like it